Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that focuses on success stories in Hawaii, normally about businesses in Hawaii, uh, but sometimes we get into the companies that support those businesses or the entities that support those businesses, or sometimes the organizations that prepare future business owners uh, or career type people to get ready for the workforce. Now, this is gonna be one of those days. Now, I just want to mention we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. Uh, and so the group that we have today came all the way over from the Eva side at Campbell High School, a uh, long trek, um, and they were here and they, they took the time out to come down and talk to us. Uh, Shane Greenfield has been on the show before, Greenland, I'm sorry, has been on the show before, uh, and he's come back and he's brought two special guests with him this time. So we're going to hear a little bit about the, the academy that they have out at the, the Campbell High School, and we're going to hear some maybe testimonials about how well this academy works for two of the senior students out there. So Shane, good to have you on the show again. Oh, great to be back. You know, we had such a, a great response last time when we did it, and uh, by being able to put up our uh, our website, uh, we've had businesses actually contact us and and getting more involved, and it's uh, the academies are really starting to build. We're uh, organizing a uh, business networking night that we're going to host on March 29th for uh, many of the businesses that uh, really want to give back and give to Campbell as well as find out how they can Is that going to be at the school? It, it's going to be at the school. Um, we've got a few business partners that are helping sponsor it. The Better Business Bureau is, is one of the, the, the main leaders in it as well as uh, Central Pacific Bank. Excellent. Um, but it, it, it's just been a, a, a wealth of, of people wanting to find out ways of how do we get involved and how can we start bridging the gap between post-secondary, DOE, as well as the business sectors on, on being able to create a great product and when we send kids out, they have those skills, habits, and dispositions so that, you know, that they can find a career. Right, and if somebody wanted to find out more about this uh, business site that you're talking about, how could they find out more? So again, you can go to CampbellHigh.org. Um, there, there's a website there. Um, you can, or you can call or email me at the school. Um, that there's, you know, any various ways. Any of the academy principals that are at Campbell, the school principal, our academy's director, um, they can all provide information on what that night will be. And if they would like to come, we would definitely love to have them come out. And what's going to be the format of that that evening? What's what's what are you going to talk about? So the the. Probably the first 20, 25 minutes, we're actually going to have a few clubs and, and different um, groups from our campus go through and perform and kind of showcase the uh, hula team, the dance team, um, the band, our drum line is going to perform. So just going to wow. kind of quick little showcase of some of the things we do, and then we're going to kind of break out and have all the academies will be showcasing uh, what their academy consists of, what our goals are, the vision of, of each of them, in trying to work with the post-secondary institutions as well as how we can partner with the business partners to get the, the many of the 3,200 students that we have out into the real world and, and get real life knowledge so that they can make real life decisions and get real life careers. Right. And it's those business partners that's really gonna be necessary to make all of this come together. H huge, because you know, the, the end game for everybody, no matter whether you're gonna go to college or whether you're just gonna go straight out and, and go into the workforce is, is a career. You know, everybody wants to have a career so that they can make a livable wage, stay and live in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and in, enjoy the dream. And, and it's our job as, as educators to try and find the best possible ways to put kids in those positions and partner with businesses, and, and they, they've been great, you know, and we, we have a couple of really good business partners that are really stepping up and putting us in touch with other business partners to make this really work. And when everybody comes together, you know, great minds do great things, and, and many people make light work. So magic starts to happen. It, it, it yeah, does. It great. really does. Now, you brought two magic people here today, that uh, real success stories uh, from what I understand. Can you uh, tell us uh, who your guests are today? So we, we brought Lila Valdez. She's in our health academy. Her her goal is to eventually become the best nurse in Hawaii. All right. Um, we, 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 we need really, plenty of those. Of course we do. Mm -hmm. yes, and we, do. we think very highly of Lila, and you know we're going to put her in touch with Hawaii Pacific Health. Um, hopefully she's going to um, get an internship this summer, and then go to college, stay here, and then become one of our you know one of our best nurses. We we want to keep them. 
And then the, the other gentleman I have is Brandon Evans, and he's in our Agricultural IB Business Academy, and he recently just uh, participated in a, a scholarship opportunity and was actually the winner and the recipient of a, a four-year college degree at HPU. Wow, very good. Congratulations to you both. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Right. Thank you. Now, Lila, why don't we start with you? Um, can you just explain how you got into the academy and how that has helped you get to where you want to go? So personally, the academy started at our school just around this time. So we, I was already a senior. But just choosing the academy that I wanted to go into was very easy. It's health. I wanted, when I become a, get older, I want to become a neonatal nurse practitioner. Mm. Tech practitioner. And, and I've already known that I wanted to go into the nurse the health field ever since I was younger. So just the fact that our school had laid out these various academies that are aligned to different jobs in the work field, that was just a great opportunity for us to expand our outlooks on certain things. Because a lot of, of kids at our school, they don't really have that background knowledge as to like what they want to do in life. Because if you ask someone there at school, oh, what is your future, like, future plans? Most of them are unsure. So having these academies really helps display that and mm -hmm. gives a lot of the students an outline as to, okay, maybe I can go through this pathway. Gives them some choices or yes. options that they can explore and see yes. what they might be interested and in. It's, yes, options are really, like, we need options because it just gives us somewhere to start. And mm -hmm. in order to actually do something with your life and start something is to at least start somewhere and explore your options because you, you some people don't stay in just one niche they go out to other niches but you know you, as we were just talking earlier you never really know where your career yeah. path is going to take you and i've had some pretty interesting twists and turns along the years and i'm not the only one i mean a lot of people start out in one direction but they end up in another uh, it's always good to keep your options open, but healthcare kind of runs in the family a little bit, doesn't it? It does. My mom is a nurse. She's an LPN. My two sisters, they are registered nurses. And my other sister, she works as, she does paperwork for a doctor. Just, just in all of the branches of, nurse, of yeah. medical field. Very good. My dad, he's, he make, he's a dental technician. So he makes teeth for the dentist. So it's just, it's... In my family background, my grandpa, he was a doctor in the Philippines. Wow. So this my, is a family business yes, then. Yes, it's a healthcare, it's, it's in our blood. But mm -hmm. I realized that I've always had an interest for it. Like, it wasn't just something that I wanted to do because it was in my background. It was something that I wanted to explore. Right. And just when I was younger, I knew that I wanted to go into health, the healthcare because, first of all, I love helping people and just immersing myself in trying to find ways to help people feel better and just go on with their lives is just what I want to do. No, it's, it's great. It, it, the world needs people like that to, <laughs> to help us older guys, you know, stay in, in shape and stay healthy. So, <laughs> yes. very good. Brandon, now you've got some interesting uh, going, you know, this, this uh, scholarship you just won, is, yes. it sounds very impressive. How, how did that all work? Uh, what we had to do was we had to present a topic or an idea or some kind of product that would help improve Hawaii. So whether that be a program or in my case a product, we had to show how it could help Hawaii and how it would implement that. And they were very diverse, they fall into a variety of different fields. In, in liberal arts and sciences, but mine was a science-focused mm -hmm. one. I made a de I made a device in school actually in our, one of our, our classes, which is focused on that. And I made a device that allows fresh and saltwater organisms to live together, and it also improved the organism growth by thirty percent. And while well, this device has already been made before, it was fifty thousand five hundred thousand dollars before, which is very expensive. Okay. But I had brought it down to a twenty dollar process. Wow. And so I presented that, and I won. And it's a full tuition for, at HPU for four years. Oh, very good. Congratulations. And, and how did the academy play into all of this? How did you get into the academy, and how did that, that help you? Well, I'm a senior, too. So our academies just started really coming into focus when I was a senior. But I joined the Business and Agriculture Academy because I thought, oh, well, what I want to do, I want to be able to help in the business community, you know, social entrepreneurship, right, ethical about it. Mm -hmm. And also, this project I was working on focused a lot with agriculture because it was growing organisms. So I thought, I'll try that. 
And one of the classes that's really focused on innovation, I was able to work on it in class. And I had that time to actually develop the product, which I wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. But I did it all in class. Well, not all of it in class. It was a lot outside of class, too. And I got a lot of help from different areas, just from reading and going out and talking to people and seeing what the real issues were. And did the flexibility of being in the academy give you the, the time to be able to do this? Yes. You know, as opposed to maybe more of a, a traditional type of a process? Yes. One of the main things I do say, I do say I had help, right? But a big part of it was that you had, you was up to you. Mm -hmm. You decide how your, well your project goes, how well what you're creating goes. And simply, if you want to talk out to people, it is up to you. So you have that time, that structured time of the day to work on your project, but it's ultimately up to you. So it's highly self-directed self and project-based, really. See, that's something that I, I love hearing people say, is that it's up to you. I mean, your whole career, your whole life is basically up to you. And you've got to put into it what you want to get out of it. That and is it, true. And it's great to hear that this is um, being communicated and the message is being received. So, Shane, I mean, are these typical of your senior students out there? I mean, it sounds like you've got two great people here. They, they are two great people. And as, and as you listen to them talk, you can hear the passion come out of, you know, that they're going to do something that they love and that they want to go into. I mean, and, you know, anytime you can find a career that you, that you love what you're doing, it's not work so that they're gonna enjoy what they do. So in, in trying to structure our academy models, we want everybody to find what their niche in life is and what they love doing so that they do put in, you know, the, the unlimited time and effort to really just be successful because it's what they're passionate about. Instead of just doing homework to do homework, it's doing homework to, to advance themselves in careers in which they're gonna make you know, their livelihood. So that's the academy model. So in other words, what I'm hearing is that when you've got this passion and this engagement, people are coming to school because they want to be at school and they want to go through this yes. and they want to yes, learn these course. things rather than being forced into subjects that maybe they're not necessarily all that enthusiastic <laughs> about. Yes. yes, very true. And and, and these guys, they, they would come to school regardless. They're, they're just great students. <laughs> but I think as we continue to build and find the passions and, and tap into what the kids are interested in, and they can go and, and, and you know, make their pathway that's gonna to replicate what, they're, that what they enjoy, that they're more likely to come to school and, and study the history of cars instead of, you know, the, the history of the world or the, you know, different mm -hmm. types of history. Mm -hmm. Although you still have to, to kind of take in some of that, you know, for graduation requirements, of course, but when you're looking at what your livelihood's gonna be for the rest of your life, I mean, you wanna study how those things happen because Everything you always want to get better. I mean, how can I get better today than I was yesterday? And, and how do I keep improving? And how you know how do I keep progressing? Because you know, like with everything, it, it still comes back down to your core values. What what do I believe in? And how successful do I want to be? Because it's only time and energy, and that's the the two things that I'm in control of. As the amount of much time as I study, or the amount of much energy as I put towards something, is strictly up to the students. And with that, they, they work hard. That you know. There's right. just greatness right. that can happen. We're going to have to take a short break. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we come back, maybe we can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the academies. And I guess there's several of them out there. Mm -hmm. And you're each in different academies. Yes. So maybe we can talk a little bit more detail about the differences and in, in how that all kind of plays out. But uh, we need to take a one-minute break. But this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here today talking about the academies that they got out of Campbell uh, High School. And we've got two students here that uh, have really impressed a lot of people. So we'll be right back in about 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground. Uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. 
Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with Campbell High School. Uh, we've got Shane Greenland here, who is uh, one of the principals out of the academy. Uh, and he's going to you know, explain a little bit, Shane, about the different. You have different types of academies there, right? Yeah, so we have six different academies. So it, it starts with our Freshman Success Academy. So all ninth graders are put into houses and put into teams so that all throughout that ninth grade, they work on basically transition to high school as well as um, they start career days, they start their career focus, and then they start really trying to, to really dive into where they think their career pathway is gonna be. So we, we talk about the other pathways, and then at the end of that ninth grade year, they choose which pathway they wanna get into and which what they think there is interesting. So then that leads into the, the other five pathways, so, or our academies. So we have the, the Academy of Business, Agricultural Science, and IB. We also have the Public Human Services Academy. We have the Digital Media Academy. Mm -hmm. We have the STEAM Academy. The um, STEAM? STEAM, so it um, covers science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Wow. And then we also have the Health Sciences Academy. Um, and Lila is, is with our Health Sciences Academy, so we're partnering up with some business partners where we're gonna actually retrofit one of our classrooms to look like a hospital to give them the real life learning, give them that environment so that when they come in, um, we, we do uh, dress for success, workplace, mm -hmm. um, workforce development on Wednesday. So the Health Academy, they wear their scrubs. Business has the business casual attire. Um, the agriculture kids, you know, they, they wear what they wear when they work in a garden, <laughs> which, you know, flip flops. I mean, we, we still, you know, make sure we're safe. But we're, we're really just trying to, to put forth that what, what is going to be expected when we get into the, the workplace. We also have the, our culinary academy, you know, with our um, PHS, and, and they've actually gone and, and won some awards with um, a bunch of the chefs on the local island. Not long ago, we had Chef Rock come in and, you know, did some judging. So everybody's trying to, to find their niche in the world and, and, and connect with partners on how do, we, how do we bring real life learning into the classroom so that, that kids can basically portray or learn all of the soft skills and the habits in which they've been lacking to get jobs. We, we want to set our kids apart from everybody else. We want Campbell yep. kids to be great. And that just increases the, the probability that they'll be successful once they, they get employed somewhere. Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's our that's, goal. We hope so. Yeah. Well, what we need to do is not only find the business partners to help with that process, but also the employers to hire the people and let them get that experience because that's yeah, Lila, in your case, uh, you know, as you move into the health sciences and, and the nursing field, um, you've got to find a place that's going to allow you to get some experience. Yes, indeed. Yes, and so you're a senior, you entered into the program. Um, how is that work? How does it work? I mean, do you have specific classes you go to to learn about nursing, or, or how is that structured? So it's the first year that the academies have been implemented, and it's since my senior year. I'm not saying it doesn't exactly apply to me, so there are still many things that are still trying to go into development. But personally, from hearing Mr. Greenland's plans about what he wants to do for the Health Academy and such, and such it's great because just the fact that he's going to make a whole simulation of the hospital, that really intrigued me because I wish I had the opportunity back then to like be exposed to the hospital setting. Sure. Because I don't, it's really, it's difficult to find like internships or opportunities to actually go into the hospital and have that one-on-one right. -on -one action with actually working in a health field. So just the fact that Mr. Greenland is pulling in all these opportunities for students and having these opportunities at school, like they don't have to go out and search it for themselves, although that's really good and that the students part since they have initiative to. It's just the idea that our school is promoting, we care that mm -hmm. we, you have that experience. And 
Mr. Greenland is bringing that in for the students now. So just the generations that are going to come through Campbell High School, they're going to have that development from freshman year to sophomore year, all the way to senior year, mm -hmm. to help them explore their options. And that's what I find really great about the academies. And as for me, I'm just glad that at home that my parents taught me to like always know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I had my parents raised me well enough to know that. So just having, just knowing that in the school system, we're developing in a way that we're not regressing. We're mm -hmm. going we're towards, forward. Mm -hmm. we're looking forward to the future. of Exactly. Our, and then yeah, being not, coming, yeah. Yeah, it's not status quo in a sense. I mean, yeah. you're looking at, at moving forward and, and making things better and, and, you know, doing what your parents did, but maybe do it, you know, a little right. bit more and better and with more technology mm -hmm. and, and that. And, and that platform is being provided to you to do that. That's, yes, that's great. Yeah, coming from a small town like a beach, it's just weird to know that there's so many opportunities out there. We're so used to being in this provincial town and just living our lives day by day. But the fact that our school is stressing on the idea that there are opportunities out mm -hmm, there, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to bring them to you. And that's what I appreciate about these academies because it's giving students that exposure and it just making them realize that I have to do something now. I have to start. And if I don't start somewhere, then I won't do anything. And it's good that we're telling, prompting students to start to somewhere. To take that initiative. Yeah. Yeah, and Brandon, I guess you're a senior too when yes. you entered the program. So you're kind of in the, the, the same um, you know, situation uh, as Lila is. But you're, you're in a different academy. And yes. what, is, what is that academy all about? So that academy basically focuses around not business and agriculture, right? Those are two very closely related fields. It's talking about how we manage our resources, mm -hmm. but also how we make it into an economical fashion and so that we understand the business of go what's going on in our world and the greater understanding. And what I think was really good about these academies is because is that they bring in things like internships and different programs where you reach outside the classroom, where before you really had to look out, you had to go far. to find It's a real practical experience. Yes. Yeah. Like I've done internships before with the Pacific American Foundation and with different groups, but I, have, I had to find those on my own. Mm. You have to go out there and you have to really look. But the good thing about academies is that it brings it a little closer to home and it allows you to just build that sort of environment where you can start on internships, you can start doing real projects. Mm -hmm and you can start doing them very, very early, and it gives you that motivation to do them. Where ordinarily, you would have to go find them out on your own, and it's possible, I mean, I did it, and a lot of other students have, but it is limited, right? So you have but to be very But it also takes some it. energy and time to do yes. that, which takes you away from other things. Yes. Yeah. So it's good to have a partner helping you in that process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, very good. And so what do you think, uh, when you get done now, I know you've already got your scholarship at HPU, yeah. Um, where do you expect to go with that? Do you have any thoughts on what your major is going to so be? I am thinking of majoring in marine science because the product that I made so far, it's very focused on aquaculture. And not only aquaculture, but agriculture too, because plants, animals, and fish, they all increase by 30%. So that's a big, it's a big growth when you just add that $20 device. And I want to continue studying that because I see this as a widely applicable product, which again, right, is the business and bringing agriculture all together, resources. Right. And also, I want to work with biotechnology because that's a rapidly growing field, genetics, working to genetically engineer organisms. You already see there are large corporations already involved in that here on the island. And, and I think we can be controversial, so be careful. It can be controversial, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you got to make sure that you make it something that is beneficial, right? That's also having those ethics and those skills bit built up, those, that idea of a solid understanding and basis so you're not going on doing reckless things. But that's something I want to pursue because I feel that if we use it properly, ethically, right, in the proper fashion, that we can really advance our society. You know, I have, and you can probably correct me because I may be using wrong terminology, but I had heard that hydro agriculture, where you're able to not necessarily, not necessarily use the land, but you can actually take and grow vertically, and that there's a, enough vertical opportunity using this technology uh, to feed the world several mm -hmm. times over. Yes. You know, so the, the, the potential for that is just really unlimited. Mm -hmm. Yes, and one of the great things about these, this device that I made is that you can put, because it's all in the water, you can use it in that hydroponics, you can use it with your aquaculture. For example, right now I'm designing an aquaponics system where you're able to grow saltwater fish, right? Like, so 
mm -hmm. like say a lemu or something like that, or a large like tuna, for example. Although I'm going a little smaller. With seaweed and with lettuce, all using the same water because it's all pumped in with these little bubbles. Oh, a seafood salad all at one yeah. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very convenient. And it puts it all in a single system and it's making it hyper efficient because ordinarily a lot of saltwater organisms, you can't mix them in with the fresh water. And there's a lot more involved in raising them and you can't bring them to the home. But with this device, you can start doing wow. that and it's very cheap. Patent it. Oh yes, it's being it's patent and pending is going right okay. now. Yeah. That's something else good. As our business <laughs> academy showed us how the whole we had a whole presentation about patents. I was like, oh, I should get that, you know, because if you if you don't cover yourself, because that's another thing, right? You can know all these science, all these all these great skills, but if you cannot apply them and you cannot think of the possible consequences and what you have to watch out for, you know, then you lose out on things. People take your ideas, mm -hmm. or you might just never be able to actually put it in a functionality because you just didn't know something and you get yourself in trouble, right. which happens way too often. It does, you know, and, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of brilliant ideas that never got to benefit from it because they just didn't protect mm -hmm. that, that intellectual knowledge. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've got attorneys that specialize in that. Yes, they do. So it's very important. You know, we're going to be wrapping up here, Shane. Um, any final words? I mean, are, are, you know, you want to put out any uh, requests for more business partners or? or uh... Well, we're, we're always looking for business partners. Um, you know, like we said last time and, and even now, one, one of the most important things, I think, is, is just networking. Mm -hmm. Get, getting people to know people that, that can help people and help schools. You know, we really want to bridge the gap between businesses, post-secondary, and, and high schools. Uh, we want to do what's best for kids. You know, we, we do have hydroponics at our school. Yeah. Um, it, it, everything is, is just always evolving. We, we have a great team at school. You know, it, it's just not, um, you know, myself. We, we have a principal that, that's really leading the push for academies, you know, Mr. John Henry Lee. Our, our CAS, Heidi Armstrong, is, is really a huge push for academies and making things happen. Um, you know, it's just all, all of our academy principals, you know, all the administrators within our school they really want kids to be successful on their terms. Success is up to them. It is, and that's, and that's probably a good way to close, that it's all up to them, up to you, you know, yes. to make it all work. So congratulations to you both. It seems like you're going to have some really astound, ex, outstanding careers ahead thank of you. you. Thank so, you. So very good, and thank you for being here again today and driving all the way out here from Middle Beach. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. I will see you next week at that time. Until then, aloha.